those stories have been largely debunked. Uh, those people, I don't know those people. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people. They paid them $1,500 and they're on tape saying be violent, cause fights, do bad things. I would say the only way because those stories are all totally false. I have to say that. And I didn't even apologize to my wife who's sitting right here because I didn't do anything. I didn't know any of these women. I didn't see these women. These women, the woman on the plane, the woman, I think they want either fame or her campaign did it. And I think it's her campaign because when I saw what they did, which is a criminal act, by the way, where they're telling people to go out and start fistfights and start violence. And I'll tell you what, in particular in Chicago, people were hurt and people could have been killed in that riot. And that was now all on tape started by her. I believe, Chris, that she got these people to step forward. If it wasn't, they get their 10 minutes of fame. But they were all totally, it was all fiction. It was lies and it was fiction. Well, Time for Terry Klein. At, at the last debate, we heard Donald talking about what he uh, did to women. And after that, a number of women have come forward uh, saying that's exactly what he did to them. Now, what was his response? Well, he held a number of big rallies where he said that he could not possibly have done uh, those things to those women because they were not attractive enough for I, I did uh, not say to be that. assaulted. I did not say that. In fact, he went on but, to say... Her two, her two minutes, sir, her two minutes. But did he, not he, say that. He, her two minutes. He went on to say, uh, look at her. I don't think so. About another woman, he said, that wouldn't be my first choice. He attacked the woman reporter writing the story, called her disgusting, as he has called a number of women uh, during this campaign. You know, Donald thinks belittling women makes him bigger. He goes after their dignity, their self-worth, and I don't think there is a woman anywhere who doesn't know what that feels like. So we now know what Donald thinks and what he says and how he acts toward women. That's who Donald is. I think it's really up to all of us to demonstrate who we are and who our country is and to stand up and be very clear about what we expect from our next president, how we want to bring our country together, where we don't want to have the kind of pitting of people one against the other, where instead we celebrate our diversity, we lift people up, and we make our country even greater. America is great because America is good. And it really is up to all of us to make that true now and in the future, and particularly for our children and our grandchildren. Mr. Trump, nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. Please, everybody. And frankly, uh, those stories have been largely debunked. And I really want to just talk about something slightly different. She mentions this, which is all fiction, all fictionalized, probably or possibly started by her and her very sleazy campaign. But I will tell you, what isn't fictionalized are her emails where she destroyed 33,000 emails criminally, criminally, after getting a subpoena from the United States con Congress. What happened to the FBI? I don't know. We have a great general, four-star general, today, you read it in all the papers, going to potentially serve five years in jail for lying to the FBI. One lie. She's lied hundreds of times to the people, to Congress, and to the, to the FBI. He's going to probably go to jail. This is a four-star general. And she gets away with it, and she can run for the presidency of the United States. That's really what you should be talking about, not fiction, where somebody wants fame or where they come out of her crooked campaign. Secretary Clinton. Well, every time... Uh... Donald is pushed on something which is obviously uncomfortable, like 
what these women are saying, um, he immediately goes to uh, denying responsibility. Uh, and it's not just about women. He never apologizes or says he's sorry for anything. So we know what he has said and what he's done to women. But he also went after a disabled reporter, mocked and mimicked him on wow. national television. He went after Mr. and Mrs. Khan, the parents of a young man who died serving our country, a gold star family because of their religion. He went after John McCain, a prisoner of war, said he prefers people who aren't captured. He went after a federal judge born in Indiana, but who Donald said couldn't be trusted to try the fraud and racketeering case against Trump University because his parents were Mexican. So it's not one thing. This is a pattern, a pattern of divisiveness, of a very dark and in many ways dangerous vision of our country where he incites violence, where he applauds people who are pushing and pulling and punching at his rallies. That is not who America is. And I hope that as we move in the last weeks of this campaign, more and more people will understand what's at stake in this election. It really does come down to what kind of country we are going to have. So sad when she talks about violence at my rallies, and she caused the violence. Uh, it's on tape. The, during now, the, last the other things are false, but honestly, I'd love to talk about getting rid of ISIS, and I'd love to talk about other things. Okay. But those other charges, as she knows, there, are false. In this, in this bucket about fitness.